Hello, welcome to video 10, Income Elasticity of Demand, the second elasticity that we've looked at. We already looked at price elasticity of demand, well here's income elasticity of demand. You know, elasticity generally as a concept asks how much does, um, how much does the demand or the supply for a good change when some variable changes. With PED, which is the, the big one, um, we say how much does the quantity demanded for a good change when its price changes. Well, here we look at what happens to the demand for a good when income levels change. And that's our definition. Income elasticity of demand, YED, measures the responsiveness of the demand for a good when income levels change. Okay? Straightforward definition. There's two ways we can calculate the value of YED. We calculate it with either of these two equations. Y over Q times change in Q over change in Y, because Y is income. We use the letter Y for income because the letter I is used later for investment. So, income divided by quantity being demanded times change in quantity divided by change in income. Or, another equation you may use is percent change in quantity divided by percent change in income. Okay, either of these equations will lead to the answer and when you've got your answer you need to be able to interpret that answer. Let's have a look at interpreting YED values. Well there are two things you must do. You must look at the sign plus or minus and the size. The sign is really really important. In PED, which you've already studied, price elasticity of demand, it always came out as negative. It was so regular that we actually ignore the negative sometimes, but no longer. Here in YED, you have to look at the sign very carefully. And indeed, when calculating, you've got to be very careful to give a negative to anything that falls. If income levels fall, you've got to count that as a negative. Or if quantity demanded falls, you count it as a negative. So, the sign. If you get a plus value, out of the YED calculation. If you get a plus value, it means the good is a normal good. That means demand changes in the same direction, up or down, with income. Most goods are normal goods, so most YED values come out as positive. If the income rises, we buy more of it. If, if our income falls, we buy less of it. That's true for 99% of goods. But if the YED calculation comes out as negative, you get a negative value, it's an inferior good. Demand changes in the opposite direction to income. I didn't close my brackets, did I? Anyway, never mind. Um, so demand changes in the opposite way to income. It is possible that we get more income, we buy less of something. That's called an inferior good. Bus tickets are sometimes given as an example of an inferior good. Our incomes go up, we buy fewer bus tickets because we can now afford a taxi. Or maybe cheap cuts of meat. It's another textbook example of an inferior good. What's the cheapest cut of meat? Maybe mince meat. Well, if our income goes up, maybe we buy less mince meat because now we can afford steak. And I apologize to vegetarians. Right, so, um, moving on, knowing that, well, we've looked at the sign, but we also need to look at size. If, and this is completely separate to the sign, but if the size lies between 0 and 1, or 0 and minus 1, we say the good has income in elastic demand, and demand changes by proportionately smaller amount than income. If the, if the answer of YED comes out as more than 1, or minus 1, the good, we say, has income elastic demand, and demand changes proportionately more than income. So you've got to separate these two things, sign and size. Sign tells us, is it a normal good or is it an inferior good, plus or minus. And size of the number, irrespective of the sign, size of the number tells us, does this good have income elastic or income inelastic demand? There are two separate readings that you have to get out of the value of YED. Let's take an, uh, an example. So here's an example. Look at this question. Following a rise in income levels of 20%, the demand for cars rises 
and the demand for fish and chips falls 30%. Calculate the YEDs of these two goods and comment. Let's do cars first. So what have we got? We've got income levels rising 20%, and the demand for cars rises 5%. I'm going to use the second equation, which is percent change in quantity over percent change in income. A percent change of quantity is a rise in income levels of 20%, so plus 20% divided by the demand for cars rises 5%, plus 5%, which equals, of course, 4. The YED value is 4. Now that 4 tells me, first of all, sign, it's positive. It's positive. What does that tell me? It tells me it's a normal good. It's positive. And size, well, it's well above 1, so it's income elastic demand for a normal good. When incomes went up, I've done it wrong, haven't I? I've got that the wrong way around. Oh. Okay, and cut it in here. So let's look at this example. Following a rise in income levels of 20%, demand for cars rises 5%, demand for fish and chips falls 30%. So there's changing demand for two different goods following a change in incomes. Let's work out the YEDs for these goods and be able to comment on them as well. And we'll start with cars. So I'm going to use the equation uh, YED equals percent change in quantity over percent change in income. Now the percent change in quantity is 5%, it's plus 5%. That's how much the demand for cars rose uh, following a 20% rise in income, divided by plus 20% rise in income. And of course that comes out to 0.25%. Well, the sign is positive, plus divided by, it's positive, so it's a normal good, plus I can see that it's below one, so it's a normal good with income inelastic demand, income inelastic demand. The rise in the demand for cars triggered by the rise in the, uh, in the income levels was not as significant as the rise in income levels, it was income inelastic but it was in the same direction. The income went up and the demand for cars went up, showing me it's a normal good. That's why it came out as positive. Now, let me rub that out, or can I just go to a new screen? I can. And now we'll work it out for fish and chips. So, again, we'll use that same equation. Um, and so the equation is uh, YED equals percent change in quantity over percent change in income and percent change in quantity now is fall 30 percent so we're going to put minus 30 percent over plus 20 percent that's the rise in income and it comes out of course as minus 1.5 well, reading the sign we get a minus it tells us that fish and good fish and chips must be an inferior good because when there was a rise in income there was a fall in the demand What's more, it was a big fall. It was a more than proportionate fall. The number is greater than one. And, and it tells us that for every 1% rise in income, there was a 1.5% drop in the demand for fish and chips. People must be going to expensive restaurants now that they can afford it, now that their income's gone up. So this is an inferior good with income elastic demand. Okay? Right, one more thing to tell you about income elasticity of demand. Look at this. Be careful. What is going on here? It must be a, a what? We've got a very straight, this is an upward sloping demand curve. How can that be? Well, it can be. If I write income here, we've got income, we've got quantity, it's a demand curve sloping upwards, 
What that is telling us is that when income is at some level, there is some level of demand, but when income is higher, there is more demand. That's income level one, quantity one, income level goes up, quantity goes up. It must be, of course, a normal good. Don't think that demand curves have to slope downwards. They do slope downwards when we're equating quantity demanded with price. But here, we're showing how quantity demanded relates to income. And changes in income can be shown by movements along this demand curve. This is a demand curve showing connections between levels of income and, level, and, and quantities demanded. Don't think that demand curves can only be shown plotted against price. They normally are. But of course you can plot a demand curve that connects different levels of income with different levels of, of quantity. And an inferior good would slope downwards, of course, showing that higher income levels, less demand. Okay, it's something to think about anyway. Okay, that's income elasticity of demand. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.